we are here to take talk you uh, talk uh, to take you on the road to module federation and talk about some of the challenges and uh, aspects of of that uh, so to give you a background, I know it has been a long day for you all, and mm -hmm. you have been going through a lot of Angular sessions these days. So we are going to dis uh, discuss about, we're going to take this talk and discuss about uh, the module federation amongst us, and going back and forth about the aspects of module federation between me and Abdella. To get started, uh, we are going to assume that we both work in an awesome enterprise working with an awesome Angular, API, Angular framework itself. I'm going to assume the role of a CEO of the company and ask the tough questions to CTO Abdella and who is going to answer all of them. Cross my fingers. So hey Abdella, like, as you know, we have been uh, having a lot of issues with our application. Yeah. Application uh, doesn't scale well and it's having maintainability mm -hmm. issues, even to do a small change, we have to do a uh, lot of stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. But to stay competitive, we have to do uh, releases so often. And also the collaboration between teams is lacking. Uh, the UI is not consistent. So what do you think we can do uh, to resolve all these issues? Yeah, that's a, that's a tall order. It's a long list of things that are kind of uh, challenging us right now. But you know what? I've been looking into some things. And I think there's something that we can do that can solve quite a few of these problems. So have you heard of microfinance? Probably. A little bit, yeah. More recently, though, module federation. In tandem, I think we have the exact formula to solve our problems. Now, what is all of that? What is microfinance? What are microfinance? What are, what's module federation? Well, to summarize it in a really quick, simple way, imagine it as a system in which you can kind of separate out your concerns, break up your application into smaller pieces, and allow you to have independently deployable parts of your application working in tandem, um, working in parallel, uh, to give you a holistic overall experience, while also being performant, that, that really came in with multi federation, and uh, giving you some fine-grained control as well. So what I mean by independent deployments of modules? So right now, our app is struggling here. We have, yeah, we have this is. one pipeline. We have this one narrow pipeline, it feels like, where you release every two months. And six weeks of those two months is planning out the next release. Yep, it definitely. is a pain in the butt. And we have like 100 people. We have 10 teams all working the same code base, all jockeying to get all their features out. It's a nice long change log of 100 things that we all have to test and you know, make sure it's all working right and yep. get through all the environments. And then, bam, something goes wrong. One of those little lines has a little issue. Roll back the whole thing and add another couple of weeks to the release and repeat. I think this is a pain that we felt for a long time, and I really want to find a way around this problem. Now, I think this is a thing we can solve with a good, strong architecture around microfinance and multiplication. Now, this is a holistic thing. It's not just about you know architecture. It's about like you know mentality as well too. It's about our team structure. It's about our components and our architecture around that as well too. We don't do reusable components. We try. We try we our try. best. Yeah. We try a couple of times. Okay. But what always happens, you know, somebody will take a component, they'll move it into that part of the application, they'll put in some very context-specific code in there. That won't work for somebody else's part of the application, and it'll all fall apart. So they make our own copy of that, and then we have five versions of that component, and it's all messy, it's all gross. It doesn't ever work out. It'd be great if we had a nice, strong boundary between our application pieces and the components themselves, and we can have a nice, strong, clear expectation as to how this should be used and how this should be brought into our application. I think we can do that with microfinance. And you know, this sounds like I'm trying to be really kind of a tyrant about how things should be done. And I think that's kind of the problem that people feel right now already. We want to make sure that our teams individually feel autonomous, like they can make their own choices about a lot of the application without worrying about um, updating a version of a library that they're depending on and then breaking another part of the application, the teams using the same library. That happens all the time. We hate it. Everyone hates it. Okay. How can we get around that? I think overall, this is kind of this discussion around decoupling concerns and decoupling kind of context, decoupling pieces of our application in a way that is still providing a nice, strong underpinning, a framework that connects them all. Um, that sounds promising, uh, but how does module federation help in scalability? Mm. As uh, swapping a single Lego block from a structure is a not uh, that trivial. 
and that's one of the challenges that we are facing as an organization. Yeah, I, I, yeah, it really is. It's, it's really hard. I think even if we tried our best, it would not be easy. This is going to take effort. It's going to take concerted considerations. I mean, there are so many things to consider, but in those considerations, we also potentially have opportunities. Like one thing I, I like about microfinance and model federation is something as simple as being able to put your entire micro app into its own folder, independent from everything else, conceptually, mentally, visually, you see this as a little block of code. In fact, if you really wanted to, you could put this into its own repository and have it be completely separate. You know, you have options here. You can do a couple of things, but the fact that you have those options is fantastic. And I think that it really, again, aligns with the separation of concerns. When you can create those boundaries in your application, you can create things like incremental updates, where you worry about updating individual parts of your application. Your change logs aren't 100 items long for the whole application. They're tied to specific parts of your application, small, tiny pieces. And it gets much easier to give you those quick, incremental updates that I think we're all trying to move towards right now. And this sounds hard to do, and it is. And one of the things we have to do is make sure that we keep and maintain important parts of our application and our organization's uh, strengths. Cross-team collaboration is an essential part of that. If we're not collaborating across teams and we kind of silo each other, all of ourselves off into our own little you know, towers and we ignore each other, we're going to have a lot of problems. So creating a good framework for cross-team collaboration and communication is essential for having success with anything like this. So it means we can break our application into smaller modular applications, and each of which can be maintained and developed individually. But how about the developer experience, uh, right? Aren't we complicating things by breaking a single application into um, more modular applications that needs to be maintained and released individually? Yeah, yeah, there's no, there's no free lunches out there, you know? We might be complicating things quite a bit here. You know, there is simplicity in that single focus repository with everything's inside of there. But at least in our cases, it's not, it's not helping us out. Um, we have to kind of move away from that, at least for now, or let's explore some other options. And, you know, while we do kind of hurt developers in some ways that way, if we're not careful, we give them a lot of options. My favorite thing I'm looking forward to more than anything else is a nice, clear, easy path to parallel development. When you're going to have all 10 teams working in their own pieces of code without worrying about, you know, am I going to break, you know, products? Am I going to break user application pages? Am I going to break the footer? Who knows, right? They're all separate. They're all, they're all removed. And that independence allows for independent deployments, everywhere from development all the way up to deployment. And that's, that's great for faster time to market. We can really make sure that we can get everything out the door quicker. We don't have to worry about getting the whole beast out the door at the same time, yeah, squeezing through that tiny little door. Um, I think that this is all a part of a better user experience, and sorry, a better developer experience. Developers care about this stuff. They care about the faster time out the door, the faster deployments. They, they get bogged down by those release processes as much as everybody else does. So making sure that we can simplify that will make things better. And simplify things like testing. When you yeah. can test only your part of the application, when you can worry about testing suites that solve your particular problems and not all problems for all parts of your application. And this all gives you this individualized pipeline. You can have different CI CD pipelines for each release. And in fact, if you really wanted to, you could have a release with all 10 go at the same time. And if only one of those apps breaks, roll that one back. Don't have to worry about everything else breaking. That's the kind of independence and, and durability you can get all with a faster deployment process. Wow, I think that's what we need to move fast without um, mitigating the risk. But if everyone is working on their own application, aren't we compromising on the mm. team collaboration because everyone can work on their own mm -hmm. application and have different patterns and architectures between individual apps instead of the whole organization itself? Yeah, I mean, that's entirely true. You know, we, we run the risk, if we're not careful, of creating these teams that are just completely removed from each other. Finding ways to, to get out ahead of them is important. Like, Ironically, I think one thing we can do is create a clear boundary and just understand exactly what is individualized consideration, what is a, your part of your tiny little app, and what is a holistic overall shared consideration. One needs to be, I think, 
everybody in the entire team, the entire organization sits down and talks about, and what only needs the five, six, seven people on your team to talk about. Creating that boundary gives you the opportunity to collaborate in different ways more comfortably. You don't have to be in every single meeting. You're going to be in only meetings that matter to you. And you have a good idea as to what matters to other people as well, too, because you have those boundaries. When you don't know, you, you assume everybody needs to be there all the time, right? How many meetings are you invited to that you absolutely did not be, need to be? So we have other things we can do to kind of give us that consistent look and feel, too. We don't want to lose consistency in our application. A shared component library is a big part of that. You know, I mentioned our components are not great. I think we're moving it out externally gives us lots of opportunities and benefits. We can have better consistency when we really consider components as a big part of that underlying shared architecture, that overarching piece to give us the sort of uh, architecture, the, the pipes, the, the plumbing, the electricity for our overall application. And while we do all of this stuff, we can still give people the flexibility to decide how their teams individually can behave. You know, that's a really big challenge. And finding that balance is really important. We don't want to have teams feel like they have to fall in line, toe the line, all the lines, to make sure that they don't, you know, rock the boat too much. They can do what they want to do, to some degree, to, you know, explore, experience, and, and push things forward. Um, as long as we have the right architecture to kind of support those efforts and have a shared effort as well. And like I said, between all of this, we need to have improved communication. We need to create clear guidelines for how we communicate about certain things. If it's a shared consideration, do we have the right channels to communicate across those? I don't think we do right now. I think everything is kind of global. Things need to be kind of considered in their own hierarchies in that regard. So that's great. With everything in place, uh, teams can collaborate and share components between each other. Uh, but still, like they can share the contracts of the components between each other but still can design each of these components differently, mm. giving users a bad user experience. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, you can take a component down from the library and do whatever you want to it, and inline style it, whatever you want. We need to, we need to consider how we want to kind of architect our design with everything else. A design system is a big part of what I think we need to do to go, going forward. It's not just about having components that are shared. It's about having styles that are shared. It's about having processes and ideals that are shared fundamentally. And that covers uh, such a wide range of topics that you'd be surprised. So having, having this idea of exactly what is shared and not shared doesn't just mean code, doesn't just mean even CSS. It means conceptually, what do we want to consider as a team versus individuals? And design and consistency is a big part of that. And when we talk about user experience, we have to consider not just visualization and UX, performance as well, too. If we're going to move towards a modularly federated system, micro front end, it's a big part of what we can potentially risk if we're not careful. But if we do it right, we can have fantastic opportunities, especially with modular federation. They really resolve some of the issues that came out across with micro front ends in the past. Things like library versioning becomes much easier to manage. And we have some flexibility there, too. We can even do things like Mono repos with, with module federation and micro front ends. You can mix them all together and do all kinds of cool things. Um, and like I said, you know, we need to make sure that our teams have the opportunity to communicate with each other. When we can have UX communicate with the back end team, communicate with the front end developer all together, all of their own performance considerations can be communicated in a clear way. So I think this is one of the nice things about having a smaller team. It's really hard to do that when you have huge teams where everyone's kind of stressed all the time. I really loved and missed the days of our smaller company when we had everyone at the same table talking about things and sharing and, 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 and communicating. We can get some of that back with the right team structure. And all of this, all of this is dependent upon having a good CI CD process. We need to think about that very clearly and make sure we decide how each team owns processes and thinks about their develop, development and deployment. It's not, no longer a separate concern. Each team considers that separately. OK, uh, so it seems like module federation can solve a lot of our issues that we are facing, right, with independent deployments and all that stuff. But one last question. What about internationalization, right? Mm. You know, our application is being used by users of different uh, regions, and we have multiple languages. How do we solve around that? Yeah, you know, I think, I think when we think about things like internationalization, 
Um, it's a great example of one of those things that we really don't want to have individual teams making very important decisions for. It's a great example of something that should be holistically across the application consistent. If we had each team, for example, using a different I18N library, um, and they have different rules for how to handle things like pluralization, that could be a problem. Um, but if we have a shared set of rules and a shared hierarchy of of, of asset sharing, for example, uh, we can really create the right pipeline to not get in each other's way, but also ensure that we are using things to really benefit each other and to benefit the application as a whole. We have to make sure that we, we, um, we enforce consistency through the tooling itself and not through kind of browbeating people. And, you know, there are a lot of things that should be globally considered this way, not just IAT and N, state management, um, maybe even global error messaging. There's probably quite a few things that fall into the same category. So you're right. I think IT and N internalization is an important thing. That should be a global consideration. And we need to make sure we have a list of all those important things and a clear plan for how to handle them. OK, that sounds quite interesting. But implementing the module federation, isn't it that hard? Like, we might end up taking that effort and implementing a lot of stuff uh, without getting or seeing any tangible benefits in yeah, it's, it's not, it's not going to be easy. Um, there are risks involved. You know, there's the first one right away is if you've ever tried to set up a micro front end or any sort of like complicated multi-team architecture, you have to make sure your configurations are set up correctly. You have to make sure that you really plan out in advance. Otherwise, it's just going to be a lot of pain off the bat. Luckily, things are getting easier now. There's a lot of great guidelines on how we can handle different kinds of architectures that we might want to consider uh, to solve our particular needs. So making sure that we really have a good idea on what we want in that regard is important. And making sure we have the right consistent technologies to use as well, too. If we want to have a shared component library or have a shared um, it and n library, whatever it may be, that we don't okay. want to have be different across applications, that can be clearly set and specified. And different architectures can even enforce this. Like I mentioned, if we want to have a monorepo architecture, we can have more specification as to exactly how we want all of our libraries, all of our teams, rather, to share their libraries. And yeah, like this is going to require training. It's going to require alignment. It's going to require performance optimization. It's going to require so many different things. But the effort is worth it. OK, well, that's quite a big task. And I trust you with that. Uh, so. Can you, can, can you summarize all of this mm. uh, again to me so that uh, we can talk to the organization and come everyone on board and start implementing that quickly? OK. OK, let me try. Let me try to summarize this in a nice, absorbable way. Imagine right now we are working in this one giant office building. And you know, we're all staff. We all maintain it. We all work in it. And we want to make a change to the lobby. If three teams want to do that, they have to wait in line, <laughs> one after the other. You can't have them all in there at once. Let's say somebody pulls a fire alarm, everybody in the building has to leave <laughs> all at once. You create these dependencies that maybe you don't necessarily want to have. Um, but what if you had more of a sort of city with okay. multiple buildings all working individually, but still sitting on top of the same infrastructure? We have to decide what that looks like. We have to decide if we want to share gas, electricity, water, ser services like firefighters and all that stuff. But once we have a clear plan for what is shared and what is individual, we can create systems that are really going to provide the flexibility to allow people to individually deploy their buildings whenever they want, to individually have the flexibility and to have the creativity to, to, to give their buildings their own individual flair while still giving a consistent look and feel through a design system, kind of like having the same architecture for all the buildings, the same bricks that you have to use, the same granite, whatever it may be. Finding a good way to create these contracts between all of our teams is going to give us everything we need to give us a beautiful city while hiding all the wires underground, let's say. Mm, that's quite interesting. I am sure I can convince uh, everyone uh, to start working towards that, but it would be really handy. Uh, if you can show something to us. All right, cool. I have a quick proof of concept app I've been working on real quick that'll hopefully give us a good idea of how this works. If I can move my mouse in the right way. Let's see. Uh, OK, here it goes. Uh, OK. I feel like I'm 
doing surgery right now. <laughs> Wait, am I mirroring? I am mirroring. I do this first. Perfect. Then. All right. Yes. Oh, I'm, I'm done. I'm <laughs> happy with that right there. <laughs> but we have a nice little app. And you know, we had this little outline to kind of highlight that these separate pieces are actually um, their own little micro apps. You can have the structure all in one page, looks nice and simple, looks the same. And you know, little links here, for example, click on to-dos. I have my to-dos right there. They just pop right in. But what if I wanted to see that individually without the whole app there at once? Well, I just have to go to local hosts. I think it's 3001. Yes, that's where it was. And you can see it's its own application by itself. This allows us to have our individual, yeah, <laughs> well, our individual micro applications considered, thought of, viewed, tested without worrying about the whole application. But it comes together in a nice, beautiful app when it's all done right. That's good. That's great, right? OK, um, I think that I'm convinced that Module Federation is way to go for our organization. Uh, and clear about that. So thanks, everyone. Thank you. Uh, thank you. If you have any questions, just come talk to us at our booth. Thank you. Thanks again.